Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages nine, five, and four. My eldest has ADHD and my friend Danielle over at Danielle Gets It Done and I have been doing this series on parenting emotionally complex kids, including those with ADHD, ODD, SPD, a host of any sort of neuro atypia that creates more emotionally complex children, that creates a more complex parenting road for us. October is ADHD Awareness Month, and so we thought we would discuss some common ADHD myths. As the mom of an ADHD child, I have so many things that I hear from parents of neurotypical kids and just average lay people around that are simply untrue about ADHD. And before I had a child with ADHD, even as a medical professional or someone with medical training, I held a lot of these commonly held myths about ADHD. One of the most common myths is simply that ADHD is not an actual medical disorder. That when I was growing up, nobody had ADHD. They were just boys or they were just called children or they were just allowed to like get out their wiggles and they were disciplined so that they could sit still during school. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of this from the older generation, especially that ADHD is just a made up thing in our softer parenting generation to make excuses for our children when they fidget, when they can't sit still, etc. So my response to that is simply one, you are categorically wrong because the American Psychiatric Association has defined ADHD. It has very set parameters. There are three separate types. This is something that has been categorized and cataloged and observed in children in the medical arena for generations, whether or not the name ADHD was assigned to it. Another thing I'd like to say is, although there has been a noted rise in the incidence of ADHD in the recent generation, part of that is due to increased diagnosis of ADHD. Part of that is due to increased awareness of ADHD. Um, I certainly feel that perhaps there are some children who are diagnosed inappropriately. For example, I personally do not believe pediatricians should be diagnosing ADHD. I think you should be having a comprehensive psychiatric evaluation by a psychologist or a psychiatrist trained in the diagnosis of ADHD. It should not simply be based on a questionnaire given to a teacher and a parent where they say that, yes, my kid fidgets and they can't sit still, they can't finish their homework, and boom, you have a diagnosis of ADHD and a prescription. That being said, ADHD is definitely a real diagnosis. So for people to run around saying that it is not is not only irresponsible, it is vastly unkind to those children who do suffer with ADHD and the families who have accommodated and changed so many aspects of their lives to better scaffold their kids. Because dealing with a diagnosis of any kind of neurodevelopmental atypia is no joke. And it is not easy to parent in that situation. And for people who don't deal with it to imply that we're all just histrionic parents making up things so that our life becomes more difficult is unkind. And that's all I'll say on that. Another offshoot of this myth is that people who receive special accommodations for their ADHD are getting a free ride. For example, IEPs or individualized educational plans for children in schools who have ADHD uh, sometimes are regarded as like a free ticket. Like, oh, well that kid, you're making it easier on them to get a good grade. Uh, I take great exception to that again <laughs> because the school system is trying its best to accommodate for the needs of children who simply cannot thrive in that type of environment. And while some of those accommodations might not be the best routes or the perfect optimal situation for anyone, neurotypical kids or atypical kids, I can see how the school system is doing the best they can with the resources they have, the number of students they have to address, and the scenario of what a public school classroom is today. Uh, sometimes those accommodations are the best they can come up with right now and the best they can do. Uh, let me assure you that it does not give children who have a legitimate diagnosis of ADHD a free ride because doing half the problems is still sometimes difficult in that allotted amount of time for that particular child. 
sometimes being sent off to a table by yourself, children don't really want that. So sometimes the accommodation, even though it's trying to help, isn't like the nicest thing for them. So again, be careful with what you say, especially if you're not dealing with a situation like that. So a third common myth about ADHD is that they will simply outgrow this. This is just boys being boys. This is just a phase. This is just because they haven't reached, you know, middle school yet. This is just because of X, Y, and Z. No, it's not. This is a neurodevelopmental disorder. This is something that is legitimately happening in this child's brain that is preventing them from having socially acceptable reactions for their age, socially acceptable behaviors for their age. And while we know that ADHD children often have delayed brain maturation that prevents them from acting their age in many common scenarios, they will lag behind by an average of three to five years in behaviors and emotional responsiveness in many areas, as well as executive functioning skills in the arena of taking care of themselves and their belongings and being responsible for their schoolwork, etc. So yes, we will see improvement because that chronological age, even though they're lagging behind, is increasing as they get older. Uh, a lot of the improvement that family members and stuff will see is because of all of this unseen scaffolding that is being achieved by their parents, by their peers, by their siblings, by their um, coaches and teachers, etc. So for the people who imply that, oh, they're just growing out of it and because they've turned nine or 10 or whatever, they're just getting more mature is on the one hand true because their brain maturity while lagging is increasing in chronological age. It's also untrue because so much of the improved behavior is due to the scaffolding, is due to the practice and the repetition, etc. And sometimes when people say, oh, he'll just grow out of it, or oh, he's so much better now because he's older, it really does minimize all of that effort that goes into that scaffolding. So if you are the parent of an ADHD child and you hear that, take a breath and remind yourself that sometimes these people don't understand all that unseen effort that goes into it. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that they are simply remarking upon the improvement they see. So try to breathe through that and just feel blessed for the improvement in your child, regardless of how much of your own effort has gone into it. That ties into the fourth common myth, which is that ADHD only affects boys. You know, that expression, boys will be boys, is so often used by people who deny that ADHD is an actual neurodevelopmental disorder and people who just think that this is just rowdiness common to young boys. It's not. ADHD has several different types. There's inattentive type, there's hyperactive type, there's the combined type, and girls are often ignored in this arena because if they have the inattentive type, that doesn't fall under people's misconception of what ADHD is. It is not simply a hyperactive type. It is not simply inattentiveness. It is a disorder of attention. It's not a deficit of attention. Often, my son can focus on things for hours, for example, if he has a new Lego set that he wants to build. He will focus on it until it is done. He has never really left a set undone. He opens the box, he reads the instructions, he does the whole thing for like the next two or three hours, and it's done. And that is hyper-focus, and that is another behavior that is a facet of ADHD. Um, a lot of girls can be misdiagnosed or their ADHD can go unnoticed because they don't exhibit any of the hyperactive kind of qualities of ADHD. They exhibit more of those inattentive behaviors or disordered attention behaviors where they will hyper focus on things but not be able to tear their attention away at appropriate times or not be able to switch attention from one thing to another well, etc. It's not as loud and disruptive of a type of ADHD as the hyperactive type. So they might not even um, alert their parents to the fact that they're having these issues until school becomes a little bit more difficult, until middle school, high school, etc. But ADHD is certainly present in girls as well as boys. And if your daughter is exhibiting some signs of inattentiveness or disorganization that is a little bit out of the ordinary, it might be worth investigating further whether she exhibits some 
type of ADHD because there are so many ways in which we can help our kids. Another common myth of ADHD goes hand in hand with all the others that ADHD is due to bad parenting, that parents are soft and they're tolerating this behavior and this babyishness from this older kid, etc. cetera, this, this tantrum, this outburst, this meltdown, they're just letting this happen and they're letting their kid fidget and they're letting their kid get away with not doing their homework and they're letting them get away with losing their things, etc. If you don't have a neuroatypical child, this is very hard to accept. And I can understand that because if you have not firsthand witnessed a child trying their very best and still being unable to meet society's expectations of what they should be able to do, how they should be able to behave, how they should be able to control their emotions um, at a given age, if you have not had to parent a child like this, if you have not loved a child like this more than life itself, it is very, very easy to say that kid acts like that because of bad parenting. It is. And that is a hard pill for ADHD parents, for parents of ADHD children to swallow. But uh, I can understand how it can be hard for parents of neurotypical children to look at some of the behaviors of our kids, of our unique, quirky kids, and think that that is not our fault. And I'm here to tell you that I don't care about what you think of my parenting. I will not be harshly disciplining my child for things that are out of their control. And do not think that I haven't because I'm just human and I have lost control and I have said things I didn't mean and I have berated and shamed at times and I am ashamed of myself for it. Because when you belittle a child or shame a child for behaviors that their brain cannot control, things that they literally are not physically capable of controlling, in their mind, when you are harsh with them for things that their brain maturity isn't capable of yet, that's on you. That is not on the child. And I will not be harsh with my child in public if I feel embarrassed of a neurotypical child's parents looks at me or glares or rolled eyes or whatever. I really encourage you, if you are the parent of a neuroatypical child, do not let the censure and disdain of parents of neurotypical children to affect how you parent your own child. Because we know in the medical community, in our community, we know that their brains are making certain things difficult for them. Living up to certain societal expectations is hard for them. It's not a choice they're making to throw a tantrum in the middle of a store. It's not a choice they're making to forget to turn in their homework for the 50th day in a row. That is something that they would change if they could and they are trying and they cannot. It is our job as their primary caretakers, as the people who love them most in the world to help them in the best ways we can and to also accept that in some ways they are not yet ready, physiologically ready in their brain to perform in this way. So that is all to say, do not alter how you discipline your child because of the rest of the world's perceptions of your parenting. Because we all know this is the Olympics. We are the superheroes of parenting. If you are the parent of a neuroatypical child, you deserve a gold medal if you are watching this video, if you are trying, if you are reading the books, if you are scaffolding, if you are making charts, if you are color coding things, if you are speaking gently, if you are giving 15 to 20 hugs a day, if you are trying your best to see your child through this you deserve a gold medal. And I don't care what any of those other parents think when your kid is having a tantrum in the middle of Target. I don't. 
And I guarantee you there is some other parent in there who's going through exactly what you are, who wishes they could come over and give you a hug. So just pretend that all those parents <laughs> are nice like that because um, it is not easy to get through it and I understand that, but you do you. You take care of your kid and forget the rest of them. And last but not least is the myth that if you are the parent of a child with ADHD, you are somehow like a special parent that you can deal with these things. You are just a regular person and life has handed you a certain set of circumstances. And it is not an easy set of circumstances. I don't care where on the spectrum of atypia your child falls. Parenting is hard when you have a totally run-of-the-mill kid. It is hard to constantly be at the beck and call of a small child, a small mammal that you have to raise and make sure survives into adulthood in a way that leaves them emotionally secure and well-educated and not addicted to any kind of substance. When you throw in a neurodevelopmental atypia, that task, the gargantuan task of parenting becomes that much harder. We are not extraordinary people when we start, but we can become extraordinary in the way we parent because of our wonderful child. I am not a perfect parent by any means. Um, I mess up a lot, a lot, a lot. But I know for a fact that I am a better parent than I would have been without my son. And I am a better parent to him, but I'm also a much better parent to my girls because I have to think about every word that comes out of my mouth. And I have to think about how we do our activities and how we schedule our day and how I can best create an environment where they can follow our house's rules and society's rules, etc without shaming them or belittling them, etc. I fail at it a lot, but I try for it all the time. I try to better myself as a parent all the time. And I see that a lot in other parents of neuroatypical kids. We are all in it together. So if you are the parent of a neuroatypical child who faces all these myths, all this denigration, all these people saying, well, your kid doesn't even really have that. That's not really a thing. Your kid will amount to nothing. It's just because you can't parent, blah, blah, blah. I'm here to tell you, I see you, I see your hard work. So does every other parent in this community. And we are all here for each other. We should all be here for each other. And the more that we can help our kids, the more extraordinary the world will be because of it, because they are the creatives. They are the neuro atypicals. They are the ones who will have the brand new ideas that nobody else has had. They are the ones who will change this world. And I believe that too, just as strongly as anything else. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to me for getting through another day. And go ahead and tell all those people who don't think whatever your child is going through is a real thing. Take a breath, uh, smile and nod and walk away because you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. What you do need are more people who have walked this path, more parents who have atypical children who can relate to you and be happy with you for all their successes and hold your hand when you cry and moan about some failure that you've had as a parent or some failure that your child has had or some parent teacher phone call that you just had or whatever. Find your tribe, find people who don't believe any of this nonsense. And when you encounter people who do, smile and nod and walk away because they are not worth your time and effort. So I hope this has been helpful, you guys. I wish you the very best day.